joining me now is someone who was inside that wild White House meeting today and is also the number two in House Democratic leadership. It's Maryland Congressman and House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. He joins us now exclusively. Leader Hoyer, nice to see you, sir. Chuck, good to be with you. Let me just look. Give us, you were an eyewitness. Tell us what happened. Uh, first of all, it was a sad day. Uh, the American people expect us to do their business, uh, and we were prepared to do their business. And the president campaigned on infrastructure. We campaigned on infrastructure. We had a meeting three weeks ago. Frankly, not much has changed. We were conducting oversight hearings, as we think is our responsibility at that time. Uh, we were investigating. We were trying to get at the bottom of the facts of what has been done, when, when it was done, and who did it. Uh, so nothing really changed uh, except apparently the use of the word cover up. But in any event, it was a sad day because what the president of the United States said, I will not do the people's business if you continue to exercise your oversight authority. Now, he used the word investigation, but uh, we and we use oversight authority. But whatever word you use, it is our constitutional responsibility. To Le Leader, Roy, take me back. Facts. I really take me back to the start of the meeting. You're there at okay. the White House. It's on the <laughs> president's schedule. It looks like we assume it's going to be one of these things that we and the press would cover. You there, Shut the House up. leaders on one side. What happened? Was he there when the meeting began? He was not there. Well, first of all, the meeting didn't begin. But when we walked into the cabinet room, uh, it was different. And what was different was uh, the uh, curtains were drawn on the windows looking out on the Rose Garden. So uh, which, which I said, that's kind of funny. I wonder if somebody was taking pictures or something and uh, made a mistake and didn't put the curtains back in place. Uh, so we could not see outside uh, the room. Uh, we, we, were there, we were there for about 10 minutes. Uh, uh, the president was about 10 minutes late coming in. And what I noticed is there was no chair set for where he regularly sits. So there is no doubt uh, in my mind that this was a, a, a show uh, with no go on infrastructure. Uh, it was a show uh, because the president was angry. The president was reiterating what he said in the State of the Union, essentially, that he would not do the people's business uh, if we continued uh, to have uh, oversight hearings, investigations, and uh, try to look at uh, documents that we think are relative to legislative business. Uh, and then the All president right. walked in at uh, 10 minutes late, clearly had no intention of going around the room as he usually does and shaking hands. Uh, but stood at uh, one end of the, t of the um, cabinet table closest to the door uh, leading to the Oval Office and said, uh, Nancy Pelosi has accused me of cover-up. There is no cover-up. I'm not covering up. Uh, and therefore, uh, I'm not going to proceed. I'm not going to go through this meeting. Uh, and essentially, he then turned on his heels and walked out. It was a little bit like the meeting that you may recall where we right. were talking about uh, border security. And he asked Nancy Pelosi, Nancy, will you support the wall? She said no. That was about four or five minutes into the meeting. He said okay, and he walked out. Now, that seems to be his style, but it is interesting uh, yeah. that uh, in not liking a cover-up, uh, this is a frankly threatening uh, the legislative body, uh, the Democrats, particularly in the Congress, and well, the American people. I will not do your business if you right. continue to investigate me. All right. Well, he's obviously calling, you know, it, let's put this in poker terms. He's calling, he's calling your bluff or, or, or what he thinks is a bluff about impeachment. And he clearly knows that it's de if it's dividing the party, maybe that's harsh. It's certainly a debate in your caucus and in your party. What do you do now? Chuck, let me tell you what is not a bluff. We're going to continue to do our duty. Uh, we're going to continue to have oversight hearings. We're going to continue uh, to ask for documentation and for the testimony of witnesses that we believe are relevant, uh, in particular to the Russian investigation. Uh, the fact that Russia uh, may have uh, cooperated with, worked with, had information from uh, individuals uh, in our country uh, to undermine our democracy is a critically important issue, and we in intend to continue to, uh, uh, to look into that and to get to the bottom of it. We also uh, are going to uh, go where the facts lead us. All right. uh, that's our, our responsibility. That's our duty. So well, if, if this is a poker game, uh, we're going to ante up. Now, this all happened after you had a members-only caucus meeting, um, which it appears to just 
publicly what Jim Clyburn said to me yesterday and what he said today seem to change slightly. Is there a growing group of members in your caucus that are essentially uh, feeling as if they may have no choice but to go to the impeachment? I, Chuck, I think the honest answer is every time the president says, I will not cooperate, every time the president says, I won't give you any information, every time the president, in effect, covers up, uh, there are more members who say, well, we may not have any alternative. But I think even at the caucus this morning, the general feeling was uh, a lot of people thought we ought to move ahead, but they were prepared to continue on the uh, path of getting the information and not going before we have solid information as to what right. action ought to be taken. So uh, I don't think there was any rush to judgment, but there is no doubt that every time the president refuses to cooperate, uh, contrary, in my view, to the Constitution of the United States, uh, the members become more frustrated and uh, more inclined. So does this mean, I mean, let's be realistic. I mean, none of us thought ideologically there was going to be a majority that you guys could find to figure out how to pay for infrastructure. But let's set that aside because, unfortunately, that's not the debate we're having. Uh, are you guys going to be able to Chuck, keep the government uh, open? It. Are you going to be able to keep the government open? Are you going to be able to raise the debt ceiling? Forget infrastructure here. You guys got to do the bare minimum. Is that doable? Chuck, we'll be able to do it. We're going to pass legislation that does all of that. Uh, I don't know about the infrastructure because we need the cooperation and leadership of the president of the United States. I said that at the White House three weeks ago. Uh, the president's response was, Steny, I agree with you. I need to do that. Uh, the right. expectation was this is what this meeting right. would have been about. There's no reason why this meeting couldn't go forward. We agree that we need infrastructure uh, yeah. for, for today and for tomorrow and for the competitiveness of our people and the creation of jobs uh, for our people. Uh, it, but, is it politically? But, the, but we're going to we're going to yeah. move ahead on doing our appropriation bills. We're going to move ahead on making sure we right. do the responsible thing. And hopefully the Senate and the president uh, will help and cooperate, not for us, not yeah. for us, not for Democrats, but for the American people. After all, he represents the American people as we do. And he's acting on their Ch behalf in infrastructure or other matters, the budget, right. uh, debt limit, hey. is his responsibility and ours. Uh, look, I know you've got to run. I want to I ask you about Justin Amash, the Republican from Michigan. Right. He's laid out a case for impeachment that's more detailed, frankly, than anybody on the Democratic side of the aisle. Does that complicate your ability to try to tell the members, hey, hold hold your water? No, I think it complicates uh, a lot of Republicans uh, who are uh, stonewalling in terms of reviewing and coming to grips with what the facts uh, lead them to. I think uh, the fact that a Republican member of Congress has now done that makes it pretty difficult for the Republicans not to say, well, there is uh, smoke. I'll look to see whether there's fire. Congressman Senny Hoyer. Uh, Thank you. I know you got to run to votes. Thanks very much yep. uh, for coming on and sharing your views. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.